This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. Dear students, welcome you all to the second chapter of physics. Yes, today we are dealing with the second chapter of physics. So in this we are going to study about the uh, the especially about the measurement as well as system of units. So the topic name or the chapter name itself is measurement and system of units. Okay. So in the second chapter, we are mainly studying about the measurement of different physical quantities. So whenever we measure any physical quantity, we should express in terms of some units, isn't it? So like for length, we'll uh, use a unit. What is the unit for length? Yes, for length, we use meter. For time, we use second, isn't it? So these are the some units that we use in order to express the quantity called time and meter is the unit that we are used to express the quantity, the physical quantity called as length. So in this chapter we are going to deal with these type of physical quantities and the units which are used to express these physical quantities. Okay. So basically in this chapter we are going to study the first one is introduction, introduction to measurement as well as uh, to the system of units, the chapter introduction and then we are going to study about international system of units, okay, the system of units which are accepted internationally so that we are using all those, uh, we can use those accepted system of units uh, in measuring different physical quantities and then we are using the we are studying about the length measurement of length how it is measured and uh, measurement of the quantity that is mass and the measurement of time and uh, whenever we measure a physical quantity, obviously uh, with the instruments, with the help of instruments, we'll measure, isn't it? And whenever we measure with the help of instrument, the accuracy is very much important, the precision of those instruments. And whenever we measure, obviously at least uh, very little, it can be little, uh, the error is must, right? It is compulsory, we'll get some error, isn't it? So, we are going to study about accuracy, precision of instruments and errors in measurement, okay. And then we are going to study about significant figures which are used to represent the measured quantities and uh, we are going to study about dimensional formulae and dimensions equations and uh, we also study about the dimensional analysis and its application. So, we are going to study all these different aspects of a physical quantity, okay, in this chapter that is measurement and system of units. So, coming to the first part of this chapter, that is the introduction part. See, in our day-to-day -day life, we observe many phenomena, and those in that phenomena, some are natural and some are man-made, isn't it? Some phenomena are natural and some are man-made. Whatever may be the phenomena, whether it, it is natural or man-made. So, whenever we want to describe any phenomena, measurement of different physical quantities associated with it is essential isn't it if i say speed 
what you require to measure speed of course you require physical quantity distance as well as time in order to measure speed isn't it yes so whatever may be the physical quantity whatever may be the measurement we require the quantities associated with that phenomena in order to understand the whole scenario isn't it let me give you an a simple example so you just consider this example in this uh, uh, in this uh, fruits are falling from the tree so if i want to understand what's exactly happening in this i should know few things isn't it what are those things the first thing i may think about from which height does the fruit fall from which height does the fruit fall and the second thing i may think how much time does it take to reach the ground isn't it how much time does it take to reach the ground what is the speed of fall of the fruit what is the speed of fall of the fruit so i i want to know all this in order to understand the natural phenomena but in order to know these different quantities like height time as well as speed i should know some important physical quantities isn't it so it can be distance if i know distance i can find out the height time mass if i know the value of these physical quantities i can easily find out the height time speed okay what what height you know from which height does the fruit fall uh, what is the time it uh, it you know it took and what will what was the speed all these things i can measure isn't it so for measurement of any physical quantity we require to decide their appropriate units in this chapter we shall study how physical quantities are measured and also how different units are defined we shall also learn the different types of errors associated in the measurement of physical quantities so i am telling you uh, the unit of a physical quantity isn't it i am i was telling you that in order to measure any physical quantity we require unit then what is this unit then you are getting this doubt isn't it i'll explain unit of a physical quantity means it is just a standard which is uh, used to measure any physical quantity okay it is just a standard which is internationally accepted in order to measure any physical quantity as i gave you the example of first speed it requires distance and time so distance and time are just the again they are the okay they are the uh, what we can say derived quantities but the distance is measured in terms of meter and the time is measured in terms of second so that meter and second are just the units which are used to uh, measure distance and second is again a standard it is just a standard which is used to measure the time isn't it so using those uh, units we can measure some physical quantities like distance and time so what is this unit then unit is just a standard for each uh, physical quantity we'll measure the appropriate what we can say using some based uh, basic quantities so we'll get the uh, appropriate units for each physical quantity okay that units are again 
we have very few fundamental units and using those fundamental units we can get the uh, unit for all the other physical quantities okay see whenever we measure any physical quantity obviously we'll express it in terms of units but when we consider any unit the three important points we should keep in our mind the first one is the unit that we use in order for the measurement or the measure of a unit should be definite and unambiguous which means 1 meter means it is it is fixed like 100 centimeter that's it's a fixed one so it should be definite so it's not that if i say you know one meter is equal to 100 centimeter if another says it is not 100 it is thousand then it's unambiguous so everyone should know it right it should be definite and unambiguous and the unit should be such that its measure should not change and if a unit is defined with the help of some phenomena and that phenomena must be permanent okay if i define any unit with respect to some phenomena that phenomena should exist permanently okay if the phenomena is true for today and if it is not valid for tomorrow and if i define a unit for that then it's absolutely wrong okay and the third important thing is the prototype of a unit should be easily reproducible and it should be easily available so these three are the important points that we should consider while dealing with units while measuring any physical quantity we'll express it in terms of units and that units uh, while expressing it in terms of units we should think of all these points okay so as i said the number of physical quantities are very large okay in a natural uh, environment or in a surrounding only we know these physical quantities are really very large if i derive a different unit for all these quantities then it will be really complex okay for thousands of quantities thousands of new units is that possible it's really very complex and difficult to understand also so what we do for that we need only a minimum limited number of physical quantities for which units should be the units of all the other quantities can be expressed defined and with their help of them okay uh, we have very few fundamental units okay which are defined for some fundamental physical quantities okay and all the other quantities are defined with the help of this fundamental quantities and even all the will get different uh, units from these fundamental units okay if i say length length is one which is a fundamental quantity and the unit of length is meter okay uh, similarly we can say time the unit of time is second okay so this length is one physical quantity and time is one physical quantity and for this length we, i can also consider it as distance isn't it yes if i say speed speed is a new quantity isn't it again for this quantity i will refer the fundamental quantity because speed is nothing but distance by time and the unit for this distance is meter and the unit for this second is time so the unit of this speed is meter per second so we got a unit for this speed also now isn't it so this is what even though the physical quantities are very large in number we'll express all the physical quantities using very few fundamental units which are defined for fundamental physical quantities again in the next class you are going to see what are those fundamental quantities and what are the units expressed for those fundamental quantities and even we are going to see some of the derived quantities how using fundamental quantities the units for derived quantities are derived 
so if i explain you that then you'll get it even more uh, what we can say you will understand it you even even more clearly the concept of this physical quantities and measurement thank you